Hello, doing a quick recording here of how to undervolt on an RX 570 or 580 video card using AMD Wattman. And the way you're going to do this is, first of all, have the latest version of uh, AMD Adrenaline drivers installed. Um, and then when you go on your desktop, you should be able to right click and select AMD Radeon settings. It'll bring up a window looking like this. Then you're going to go select on the gaming tab in the top left hand corner. Um, then you'll hit global settings and under global settings there will be something just to the middle here called global Wattman. You will select that and if it's your first time using it you will have to hit accept. It just basically warns you that you can damage your equipment just by adjusting voltages and whatever. Uh, but you just hit accept and all we're going to be doing today is just going over these settings here for um, or basically how you go about changing your uh, what is it your megahertz your core core clock as well as the core voltage which are which pretty much go hand in hand so yeah all you do is you just hit this little check mark right here um i actually had it i guess set up already so i'll just hit reset so we get the default settings um but yeah the default settings are right here for this video card this video card is the rx 588 gigabyte MSI V1 card or it's the MSI RX 580 8GB V1. It only has one fan on it. So a couple options you can do in here. Um, first of all, I recommend if you're going to leave the core volt, no, I mean the core clock the same. Uh, do a little bit of research and uh, drop and figure out or just through testing, figure out what your card can run at. Uh, like what frequency uh, can run at the lowest voltage possible pretty much without crashing and the reason you want to do that is so that your card can run cooler and if you run if your card runs cooler it'll generally run quieter as well um, so yeah all I'm doing here is plugging in some voltages that I'm 100% sure are stable just from experience well 99% sure I'm sta are stable um, 900 may not be good here we should probably just put it back up to 950 um, but yeah, this is pretty much all you do. As you can see here, I'm just punching in numbers. And if you want to adjust the core clock, it's the exact same deal. Let's say we want, uh, actually this is a good example. You can overclock. So for example, if you wanted, you could run 1400 megahertz at probably 1125 is my guess for what voltage you would need. Um, don't take my word for it. Test it out yourself, but I believe that should work. Um, but one thing I may actually do, this card only has one fan, kind of like a blower style model. Um, so what you might want to do is actually lower the clock down to let's say we want to run the card at 1250 or 1225 megahertz and we're going to lower this down to 1200 and as well it's drag and drop as you can see here so I don't need to do anything really fancy it just saves me a little bit of time with the number pad um, but the reason you'd want to lower the clock down like obviously your first thought would be like oh well, isn't that going to lower our performance a lot? Well, let's see. Let's go to calculator. Uh, is that a calculator? Uh, calc uh, it's an app. If I have to download. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So if we're going from 1400, which is our, our let's say 13, 1350 um, minus uh, 1225 leaves us with 125. There's 125 megahertz difference. And if we do the math correctly here, so 125. How do we do this? I believe, sorry guys, this is this is math on the spot here. So this is 1350 divided by 125. Oh, I didn't punch in the numbers correctly. 125 gives us 10% uh, megahertz difference, and the performance is probably going to be about 10% as well. So that's something to consider. Um, where this would, where it would be worth overclocking is if you're going from 55 FPS, an additional 10% would give us about 60 FPS. But in most cases, like my whole point is kind of like lowering the core down to about 12, 25, you're going into a more efficient power range for the card. I believe the card is most efficient around 1100 megahertz on the core to 1200, depending on like your, your kind of quote silicon lottery of what kind of card you got. Um, but yeah, I'd say you could drop it down to 1225 on the core and then you can go from 11, like 1125 all the way down to probably 950, yeah, easily 950 millivolts, super easily this low. You could probably even go a little bit lower, but yeah, like these are just some settings you can use here. Um, then you can go down to 875 for 950 and then you can go even lower to 800, I believe would be just fine. And there you go. Let me just put this up to 850. That'll be just fine. But there you go. This is also another option you can do where now we're going to be drawing a lot less power. 
Um, I will recommend you do test these, whatever settings you put in here, you test them out either in a demanded game where you crank the visual settings to like to the highest so that you're getting 100% GPU usage, or you get a program like uh, Unigen Heaven Benchmark, it's free to use, you just load that up and if there is a, uh, if your voltages or core clocks are not stable, the system will freeze up. And don't worry about making mistakes, the worst thing that'll happen is your system freezes, You'll have to hit the power button, you'll have to hard shut down the system by hitting the power button for about 5, 5 seconds, and then you just boot it back up. AMD Wattman is great, it automatically resets all your settings, and um, yeah, and then you can go right back into it, you just go to the desktop, hit AMD settings, go into global settings, and then select global Wattman. And always guys, remember to hit the apply setting after you change anything. Uh, one thing you may want to do if you are, an, are on an RX 570 is go down to the power limit and increase this um, maybe to 130 watts if you do want to overclock. Uh, but in most cases, lowering the voltage will give you uh, a little bit more uh, kind of wattage to work with in terms of, uh, yeah, basically, anyways, I'm not even going to go into that much detail. But yeah, AMD Wattman, I really recommend it for adjusting your voltages um, over MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is great. Um, here I have MSI Afterburner, I use this a lot, uh, here you can see we can adjust the voltages ourselves, but the thing with MSI Afterburner and adjusting the voltages, if I drop it by 50 or 60 mill millivolts, that is even going to affect the lowest um, state of the graphics card here, so um, yeah, 600 megahertz on the clock may not be stable at 700 millivolts or something, so that's something we do need to consider. And that's why I would lean towards AMD Wattman as a long-term undervolting solution. But um, yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. And I do recommend, I do recommend, before you just lock in your highest overclock settings, do try running your card at like 1200 megahertz, 1250 megahertz, at like 900 millivolts, 920, 950 millivolts to see how big of a difference in terms of temperature and then if it's a lower temperature how much quieter your system can run because maybe sacrificing those 10 15 fps if it's on like if it's a higher fps game where that 10 percent performance seven percent performance is worth it to have a quieter gaming experience but anyways guys if you guys have any questions uh definitely reach out to me via youtube youtube comments and stuff and i'll always get back to you and um yeah have a great day and thanks for watching